the philosophy of Johann Gottlieb Fichte has, has been said in many different cases to be, I guess, different from, I mean, well, I guess, close to the um, kind of philosophy of phenomenology, which was the kind of philosophy that followed him in the, in the next century with um, Eben Husserl and Martin Heidegger. Um, Fichte has books like this one, The, the science, science of Knowledge or The Wissenschaftslehre. He also has the voc vocation of man, and I plan at some point to do part by part or se se section by section um, discussions of those books. However, I've done a couple videos on his on, on his stuff, like brief dis discussions, and in, in, in this video I'd like to do a phenomenological reflections of, upon Fichte. I have a video like this of phenomenological re re reflections of Barclay, Schopenhauer, I think that's the only, the only other two. So this will be the third one that's of this kind of video. Um, so basically in this video I wanted to say in what way Fichte is in a way a kind of a phenomenological philosopher. Um, I have to discuss the Tat Handlung and his brand or just their way of idealism and <clears throat> why is Fichte a 19th century philosopher I, I, why is he and how, how is he phenomenological in any way possible um, that's the way he is is that he has this kind of philosophy or thought process of that <clears throat> and it's a, it, 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 that's what makes his brand of idealism w what it is that if we see something, if we see the book, you know, he goes against Kant's phenomena, noumena, dis dis distinction, or any kind of rationalist met metaphysics, or any, or any kind of um, metaphysics that, that, that claims to, that, that to be an objective, abs absolute world outside of that which we, we, we can see, because Kant's, Kant's phenomena and noumena, or if I see this book, the phenomena, the what what I'm seeing of this book is the phenomena, and there's a noumena which is beyond or behind it, somehow, way, shape, or form, that is still of this book, but it's beyond what I'm seeing now. Um, <clears throat> so he goes against the Kantian brand of idealism. I mean, Kant thought that there was a kind of objective or or, or absolute world out there beyond what we can see. And his his idealism <clears throat> was, in was in a way that the things we do see, the things we do apprehend, you know, the things we do look at, are um, just a, a a version of the of the world, and only you know, and the, the things we see of the world are 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 only themselves just idealistic things. But there's something more real and absolute out there that we can't really get at. We can't we can't really get at that noumena, he says. For for Fichte, this is entirely different. It's entirely, you know, he thinks that the concept the concept of a, of a noumena is 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 contradictory. It's problematic. Um, and in a, in a way, I think it is because, for one, I mean, he 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 thinks that the whole thing is contradictory. But it's also the the truth that I think that we can't really verify any kind of noumena or objective being or absolute being out there at all. So um, <clears throat> he states that when we see a, a thing, when we see a book, what we see of the book is what is what we see of it. So there's you know if I see the book. There's, there's no other, you know, uh, I'm trying to figure out a good way to say this. Um, what we see of it is really all there is really all it is for us. There's no kind of thing beyond it that you know could be something could, could be something for us. But what we see of the book is what it is, and that's it. You know, there's that's all it is, and um, <clears throat> and. What we see of the book is what we see of the book, and there's there's no other kind of noumena or thing behind it that we can kind of think about at all. Um, so, 
there is no he said he said he said there he said there to be no objective or absolute self but the tot the tot hein lung or the fact act is that um we go in the world and we develop and con construct who who we are and via the way the world present present presents itself to us we create moral practical or normative whatever way you want to, you, you want to say it or in, and also the theoretical standards that we put on ourselves and that's how we kind of in a way develop a meaning and a, and a purpose of our of our of our lives um and that is is idealistic in a very obvious way i think because there's no there's no absolute purpose or there's no absolute meaning there's no absolute being at all but in the tot in the the tot handling is a way in which we can in a way in very very vaguely create our own meaning and purpose um i don't i, I don't i don't want to say it like that because it, it is never said said a lot like that and saying it the way i just said it could be a problem in a way but that's I, th I think is a good is a good way of summarizing it. Um, <clears throat> so the philosophy of phenomenology of Husserl and Heidegger and beyond. What goes on there is <clears throat> we have the phenomenological après or the bracket <clears throat> where we're not going to inquire into whether things that, that we see are mind dependent or mind I independent. We're just going to study. The thing we see now, Kant had a to had a to to the things themselves thing, and as did Husserl. Husserl his to to his to to the things themselves was, we're just gonna go to what we see. The things themselves are what we really see, and that's and, that, and that's it. You know, we go to the to the things themselves, and that we go to the things we see themselves, and not and not and not, and not, and not try to think about some kind of thing beyond it, or whether it's dependent on our minds because these are things that we can't verify and I t I'm totally on board on board on board with that. I mean I totally think that we can't we can't verify or try to um you know we can't we can't, you know, um verify or make sure of, you know, things we see being mind dependent or mind independent. We just can't. And that's really the way it is. Um, so he said he's the uh, bracket or the epoche is that we're going to go on inquiring in the things themselves only. We're going to go on inquiring into that which presents itself or gives itself to us. So when I see when I see this book, this phenomena is giving itself to me. I guess um, phenomena is a, you know phenomenology is a science of phenomena and it's just looking at the phenomena and not thinking about the noumena. Or or any other considerations or thoughts that we can't really f verify. Now I have a phenom I have a phenomenology phenomenology playlist which has tons of videos in there where if you want to understand a certain thing of Husserl's or, or Heidegger's or different other writings and then that's in there. Then this this video will will go in there also. Um, but in a way, Fichte's philosophy is phenomenal is is phenomenological. Because, you know, there's no kind of, I mean, he, he he's not talking about this mind that produces things. He's not saying that there's, oh, well, he kind of is, because this, this idealism that he has is in a way like, is in, is in certain ways like Kant and Hegel and Schopenhauer and Schelling, um, you know, with those are, those are the, the, uh, 19th, the the 19th century philosophers are going around him. It's like should shouldn't he ascend? So sets it some of them. Um, his philosophy is phenomenological because, in a way, in you know, and he does have some idealistic things about th about the things being mind dependent. But the ta the ta and his idealism in, in his in his in most of his idealist thesis. Is that things? Our knowledge of things is about reflection, understanding, and thought, and the 
tar, the, the tar, the tar handlung or the eye positing itself is about the, the eye under, is, the, is about the eye reflecting upon things. It's it's about the eye, the eye the self. I mean, um, the eye um, understanding and re, 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 reflecting upon things in in the world, and there's no there's no obje, obje, objective world or meaning or objective meaning or or, or absolute purpose. But through the through the ta, through the Tahan Lung, we come to, you know, develop such things, and that's that is why, in, in my opinion, Fichte does have some. It has some phenomenological flavor, if you will, in his in his philosophy. Um, if you if you if you think I've um, left out things that 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 should be included in a video of this of this title. Comment here, or if you have a question, also comment here, or you, you, YouTube might message me, or go, go to my Twitter. I should I should start giving that down, down there, and I would love to, to discuss with you. Thank you.